Sand volcanoes caused by recent California earthquakes. What are they? Well, I didn't know that they occur, but they do. And this is something I learned today, live and learn. We learn every day new things concerning what's going on with uh, geology. But this is because of what we learned from the Loma Prieta earthquake, uh, finding that there was actually a magnetic disturbance precursor two weeks to, uh, before that earthquake with the magnetic uh, field increase uh, and intensifying up to three hours before. And it could have been used to, of course, uh, somehow warn people. Um, that has to be picked up on because I'm sure that, that there is something in that. But this is something very strange. Sand volcanoes. What happened during the Loma Prieta earthquake of 1989, October 17, was that it, it uh, resulted in the liquefaction of soil in the waterfront area there, and the other effects included sand volcanoes, landslides, ground ruptures, some 12,000 homes, 2,600 businesses were damaged. So what are these sand volcanoes? According to Wikipedia, this uh, description says they're called sand volcanoes or sand boils. They occur when water under pressure wells up through a bed of sand. The water looks like it's boiling up from the bed of sand, hence the name sand boil. A sand volcano or sand blow is a cone of sand formed by the ejection of sand onto the surface from a, cer a central point. The sand builds up as a cone with slopes at the sand's angle of repose. A crater is commonly seen at the summit. The cone looks like a small volcanic cone and can range in size from millimeters to meters in diameter. The process is often associated with soil liquefaction and the ejection of fluidized sand that can occur in water saturated sediments during the earthquake. The New Madrid Seismic Zone exhibited many such features during the 1811-1812 New Madrid earthquakes. Adjacent sand blows aligned in a row along a linear fracture. Within fine-grained surface sediments are just as common and can still be seen in the New Madrid area. In the past few years, much effort has gone into mapping liquefaction features to study ancient earthquakes. The basic idea is to map zones that are susceptible to the process and then go in for a closer look. The presence of absence or absence of soil liquefaction features is strong evidence of past earthquake activity or lack of earthquake activity. These are to be con contrasted to the mud volcanoes which occur in areas of geysers or subsurface gas venting. Flood protection structures. Sand boils can be mechanisms contributing to liquefaction and levee failure during floods. This effect is caused by the difference in pressure on two sides of a levee or a dike, most likely during a flood. The process can result in internal erosion where the removal of soil particles results in, pipe, a pipe, in a pipe through the embankment and the creation of the pipe will quickly pick up pace and will eventually result in failure of the embankment. The sand boil is difficult to stop. To most effective, the, method, the most effective method is by creating a body of water above the boil to create enough pressure to slow the flood of water. A slower flow will not be able to move soil particles. The body of water is often created with sandbags forming a ring around the boil. During the flood of spring 2011, the uh, U.S. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers had to work to contain the largest sand boil ever discovered. The sand boil measured 30 feet by 40 feet, was, was located in the city of Cairo, Illinois, at the, the confluence of the Mississippi River and the Ohio River. Now, what happens during earthquakes? An example of this is during the 1989 earthquake in San Francisco. We're talking about the Loma Prieta. When sand boils brought up debris from the 1906 earthquake. This process is a result of liquefaction. 
by mapping the location of the sand boils that erupted in the Marina District during the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake, scientists discovered the site of the lagoon that existed in 1906. The lagoon developed after the fair's seawall was constructed and was later filled in in 1915 in preparation for the Panama Pacific International Exposition. That was uh, the World's Fair held in San Francisco, California from February 20th to December 4th, 1915. Its stated purpose was to celebrate the completion of the Panama Canal, but it was widely seen in the city as an opportunity to showcase the city. So basically a sand volcano is a cone-shaped geographic landform that results from the expulsion of liquefied sand from a central point to the land surface. The sand volcano, cone-shaped geographic formation, the ejected sand accumulates in a cone shape sloping away from the center, expelled sand slopes down, a crater is formed at the apex, the resultant land form resembling a volcano. Sand volcanoes are also referred to as sand boils, usually small in size or diameter of the base of a sand volcano ranging from millimeters to meters. Sand volcanoes have been negatively implicated with the exacerbated, uh, exacerbation of efforts of natural disasters like earthquakes and flooding. The formation of a sand volcano formed through the soil liquefaction process. It begins in the sand beneath the surface which often becomes waterlogged. The resultant effect of the interaction between the liquefied sand and the sand on the surface is what often leads to the sand boil phenomenon. The liquefied sand loses strength upon saturation of water under the pressure exerted by the surface sand, which is stronger. Compaction occurs and upon ex exploitation of the line of weakness, the liquefied sand and water are ejected onto the surface. And once upon the surface, the extruded products spread liter laterally around the, sur the surface opening and repetition of the process leads to an increase in the sand, uh, size of the sand boil. Sand volcanoes and earthquakes. The liquefaction process in sand volcanoes results in catastrophic effects of earthquakes. The deformation, sinking, and rotation of structures has occasionally, uh, occasionally been associated with sand boils. In 2001, an earthquake in northwestern India near ba Buha, Buj caused massive property damage and numerous deaths. The havoc caused was associated with sand volcanoes, as huge cracks were visible and sand and water were expelled from these cracks in what looked like volcanic fountains. In San Francisco, the eruption of the sand volcano was linked to the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. One of the most powerful series of earthquakes occurred between 1811 and 1812 in New Madrid, Missouri. In this instance, liquefaction was implicated in the course of the earthquake. In one report note, cracks opening from which sand and water was expelled, thus supporting the ocean that there is a link between liquefaction, sand volcanoes, and earthquakes. And sand volcanoes and floods. Levees are flood banks that keep rivers along their plain restricted to low-lying coastlines and in so doing, they prevent the control and control flooding. These dikes can be artificially erected or occur naturally, and the liquefaction process involved in formation of sand volcanoes has been implicated in levee failure, leading to unnecessary flooding. Sand boils create an imbalance between two sides of the levees in terms of pressure, which leads to internal erosion and eventually levee failure. Efforts are often made to counter the effect of sand boils by creating a body of water around the boil using sandbags. In 2011, a sand volcano in Cairo, Illinois, was implicated in flooding that occurred in the confluence of Ohio River and Mississippi River.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.